So my next guest has an amazing story and I'm so excited to have her on the show. She is a survivor of Dirty John and her name is Deborah Newell, if she needs any introduction. And she has just released her own book, Surviving Dirty John, and she is on a mission to help women now. So welcome to the show, Deborah. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you. And you have gone through so much. <clears throat> Uh, I love how you have turned it around and you are recognizing the ways that you can actually help women to not go through the same. Tell us like, how are you, how do you get involved with someone like that? And, you know, I, I, I know that a con, right? There's someone that makes you feel like you're number one and, and, how was that for you and how easily were you coerced into loving this man? What you don't realize is these men have spent a lot of time figuring out how to have women fall in love with them. Mm -hmm. So it's a game for them. It's, it's not the real thing. What they're doing is it's called love bombing. Mm. So they're saying everything right. They're doing everything right they actually have studied you mm. to understand who you are and what makes you fall in love with someone. So one of the things that you have really gotten out there and, and are education, educating women on and you're an advocate for is coercive control. So what is that? Yes. So it's basically where somebody has done several steps to number one, love bomb you. Mm -hmm. And then number two, what they do is they start, uh, I guess it's called luring you into where you all of a sudden feel and depend on them a little bit more so to mm -hmm. do things for you. Um, and then they start, it's called gaslighting, mm. where they start making you feel like you're the one I remember I guess a good example is um John would say your kids just want you for your money and I'd say no they don't mm -hmm. my kids love me and he said no you need to put them at a distance so they start at this point isolating people from from you mm -hmm. to where they can control you a little bit more yeah and you're not even aware of it because it happens so slowly and yet it, it's just amazing. Right. Um, I felt the like end. a very smart person and uh, here I am sucked into this. Well, let's talk about the fact that you had an incredibly successful business. Um, you know, you were not someone that just rolled over and let someone take control. You had created a successful life for yourself. So this could easily happen to anyone. And you are an example of that. So I just don't want anyone out there to think that, you know, it, it, you're a soft person if this ends up happening. Yes. Uh, the one thing I realized is these men, it's a, a trophy they're going after, whether it's sex uh, or how they look or money. It, this is the trophy. And so they usually go for more successful women. It not only is it the power that they get, but mm -hmm. the end game is they've got your money or whatever it is that they're wanting. Yeah. Let's talk about red flags that you started to see or what could someone look for for themselves? Well, number one, um, I didn't look at the red flags. I was falling in love and the dopamine of falling in love is a high. Mm -hmm. So you, you sort of ignore everything, but red flags for one is moving too quickly. Uh, number two, uh, he didn't have any friends or mm -hmm. any that I saw. Uh, I also, you know, listen to your gut. And if something doesn't feel right, it usually isn't. Mm -hmm. The other thing was my kids didn't like them. 
but that one is normally a red flag. But at the same time, my kids really didn't like anyone I dated. So okay. I, my attitude was, oh, here we go again. So what did it feel like? I mean, to realize like now I've asked, isolated my kids and I'm with, with John, like what was the final turning point for you? My kids. Mm-hmm. I'm so close to my all four of my kids mm-hmm. that I couldn't bear having a wedge between us because I was so close. And I thought, I can't do this. I, I can't, you know, even though they were grown on their own, had their mm-hmm. lives, you still as a mom want to be a big part of their life. Oh, of and, course. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was the the straw that made me actually leave mm-hmm. was I couldn't see life without them. At one point I was working with a forensic psychiatrist and I was working with um, a private detective, actually a couple, and they were helping me understand who this man was because again, they told me, you just don't walk away. You have to have a plan. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I would listen to the forensic psychiatrist, give me advice of what John's, you know, in game is and what he's doing each step of the way. And the one thing that I learned was I had to be ahead of him. I had to play the game right back. Mm -hmm. And so when he installed the cameras in the house, I I caught caught on within a few weeks that it was more than just keeping me safe. I could sit there and put um, log in to my phone and see what he was doing. My daughter put a tracker on my car uh, and I would leave that one. I had a Tesla and I had a Range Rover. I would Mm -hmm. leave the Tesla because I could follow and trace what he was doing. They had diagnosed him as being a sociopath, narcissist predator. But when he set my car on fire, I also had a Jag. When he set my uh, Jag on fire, that's when they upped the game and they said he might be a... um, a psychopath. Mm -hmm. And and in the end, he was, he was diagnosed as a psychopath. He checked all 20 boxes off. Wow. And you talk about all of this in your book. It's your, it's your side of the story. And are you also helping women to understand uh, how this could be happening to them and what they should do? I was so fortunate that I had the means that I could sit there and train somebody to take over my position, that I could actually leave uh, because I had to learn my, um, what my escape plan was. And a lot of women are stuck. They have children. Uh, I have one that's married to a policeman. Mm. Uh, I have another woman uh, or several women that because they have children, they just can't leave or they don't have the financial means. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and for your continued efforts and how you're helping women today and turning this tragedy in your life into a triumph to now help others. Thank you. I appreciate that. You are an incredible woman and your daughters are incredible. And I know that you still continue (laughs) to do so much to heal through what happened to you, but helping others I know is, is a big part of that. Yes, thank you. And my book, by the way, is called Surviving Dirty John. And it gets into all the details because what you see on TV is more Hollywoodized. Wonderful. Well, get out there, get the book and continued success, Deborah. Thank you so much. You're so welcome.